Well, we're so thankful that you're joining us for the Disciples series, where we're looking at how we can put personal spiritual practices uh, into our lives. And so last year we spent a whole lot of time looking at the discipleship path and how we gather together as the church and worship, how we gather in small groups like you're doing now, how we serve in the church, and then how we reach by inviting people uh, to come and see what we're all about at Woodbury Lutheran. Well, this year we want to focus uh, on the discipleship path, but we're going to look a little bit more on the scattered side of things. So what happens when you leave uh, the church building? What happens when the church moves outside of those walls? And so we hope that over these next several weeks that you're going to gain some insight on these personal spiritual practices that you can uh, put in practice in your life, not out of guilt, but because you know they will draw you closer to Jesus. So be blessed during this series. Hi everyone, Pastor Drew here. I'm excited to get to oh, begin opening up this conversation about prayer, this first discipline that we're looking at in this series of disciplines that God has given us to live in together as a community, uh, as families, as individuals. And I'm just going to open up the conversation of prayer, and, and prayer is wide and broad and it's deep and it has many different facets of, of how it plays out in our lives. Uh, but we're going to look at a, a particular text from the book of Matthew uh, that you'll also hear if you end up at, at a church service this weekend at Woodbury Lutheran, you'll hear from Matthew chapter 6. And uh, also going to just look at what the practice of prayer uh, means in our lives today and how uh, some of us uh, may come from a place where we feel uh, like we, we haven't been good at this discipline. And, um, and, and maybe that's, that's okay. It's, it's a good starting place for us to go. There's time for growth. There's space for growth in this. But before we get into all that, I, I just wanted to share a paragraph um, from a book uh, written by a guy named Gabe Lyons uh, in this book called The Next Christians. And uh, you'll see it on the screen uh, as I read it. It says this, as Gabe talks about prayer in this book, he says, As culture drives the masses towards a me-centered existence, the practice of prayer is posturing the next Christians to remember who really sits at the center of their lives and faith. Prayer, by its very nature, settles the soul. In the most elementary descriptions of this practice, prayer is a way to bring our request to God. But the deeper benefit is the way it changes the one doing the asking. Prayer humbles and postures the next Christians to recognize that they aren't in control or the primary ones responsible to make it happen. It causes them to pause just long enough to recognize that their power comes from their connection with God and the working of His Spirit in their own lives. You see, the practice of prayer has been a part of the Christian community uh, for centuries, actually for millennia. And God has called us into this gift of prayer, of being able to, to place our trust fully into Him, where we begin to take ourselves away from this me-centered attitude that the world has and say, God, I, some of these things in my life, they're, they're just beyond my control. And so, Lord, I release them to you. I release the, the worries and the struggles, the troubles that I have, and I lay them at your feet. Just as Jesus calls his disciples, those who are weary to come to him, and he will give them rest in the scriptures, God says this gift of prayer is a way that you can do that. It's a way that you can rest, a way that you can know that I am intricately involved in your life, in the worries and the matters of your family and your community. And so as we look uh, at this idea of prayer, as I mentioned before, some of us come from, from a place where we feel like, well, maybe, maybe I've been terrible at praying. I haven't, I haven't really, as I consider my life and I consider what, what prayer has looked like in my life, I've just been lousy at it. And, and I want to help you get over that hurdle if that's where you're at. I want you to be free to, to recognize that any guilt or shame that you have around prayer uh, doesn't need to be there. Uh, that God looks at you through His Son, Jesus Christ, and He loves you. You are His treasured possession. As we walked through Exodus uh, this last summer in our sermon series, we heard that over and over, that God treasures His people that he treasures Israel and he treasures you through his son Jesus. And so uh, just as a, a father or a mother loves their child or a grandfather or grandmother loves their grandchild, uh, with that sort of sentiment, God looks at you and he desires to be in relationship with you. 
which is truly a huge aspect of what prayer is. It's a relationship. It's God saying, I am open uh, to, to grow with you. I am open to having you see that we are on this journey of life together. And so some of you who, who are parents or who are grandparents, you know that when uh, your kids, especially those of you who have kids who've, who've left the house, maybe gone off to college or grown up, um, you know that, that when they reach out to you, and whether it's a text message or a phone call, and you see on your phone who is connecting with you, and it's your, your own child or your grandchild, uh, I would imagine that's a pretty exciting moment for you to know that, that your child wants to connect with you. In the same way, God, no matter where you've been in life, no matter what you've been through, God is excited to connect with you through prayer, to be able to communicate with you. And he's opened this up, as we said earlier, through the one and only Jesus, the Christ, the Holy One, who has redeemed you and has restored you to a, a full relationship with God, and he has breathed out his Holy Spirit upon you. Now, in our day and age, often prayer can become an afterthought. It can become a thing where it's kind of the last resource that we go to because so often we try to manipulate or figure out things or come to a conclusion of how to get through our troubles and our worries and our struggles on our own. But so often God says to his people in the scriptures and to us today, I want you to, to lay the big things, I want you to lay the burdens, the troubles, your struggles before me. And trust me, I'm a God who acts. I'm a God who is in control. And I'm a God who hears. And Jesus breathes, he actually breathes out his Holy Spirit onto his disciples. And he says, receive the Holy Spirit, which you received when you came to faith in Jesus, when the waters of baptism washed over you, if you've been baptized, when you were baptized in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, God said, you are mine, I claim you as my child. And now, he says, you have access to who I am. You don't need to be in control and in power over all things. God says, I am the one who is in power. And so come, come to me. Come to me when you're weary, when you're weak, when you're burdened, when you don't know what to do. And so how do we come to God? How, how do we do that in a, in a world that is busy and schedules that are chaotic, in a time when it seems like uh, there's, there's not another you know, minute or moment in the, in the day to, to squeeze anything in? God, God calls us, just as we see in Scripture with, with many characters, and especially in the life of Jesus, to... to to live a life of solitude, to, to live moments of solitude. Um, when I say uh, live a life of solitude, it doesn't mean being quiet the whole time, but live a life that is paced out where in the midst of your busy schedule, in the midst of the work that you have to do, in the midst of your family obligations, that you're taking time to disconnect. In a world that's so connected with cell phones and entertainments and, and all sorts of activities, we can step back. And we can connect with God in solitude in a way where we say, I'm just going to release all this right now and I'm going to allow myself to be in total focus, in total connection with God. And it doesn't always have to be through words. Uh, sometimes it can be through different forms of, of meditating. Martin Luther was a guy who was very much pro-meditation of taking the scriptures and reading God's words, things like the Psalms, and, and chewing upon those. Chewing the cud is, is a way that, that some of the early church fathers would talk about it, where if you know what chewing the cud is in livestock, where many livestock have multiple stomachs, and, and they take in grass, and they chew on it, and then they regurgitate it, and they put it down in a different stomach, and they regurgitate that, and they put it in another stomach, and this goes on. So Luther and some of the other church fathers talked about, about chewing the cud of the scriptures, focusing on a psalm or a verse or a word and meditating upon it and allowing God's Spirit to speak to us and then praying, praying from that, from what God's Spirit is saying. 
Sometimes you're going to pray in that way where God's Spirit is working through His Word. Sometimes you might need to be praying as you're knitting a cap. If, if you're someone who needs to be uh, using your hands. This is, this is an ancient uh, tradition in, in many different church bodies. Uh, the Roman Church, the Orthodox Church. When I was in Greece uh, a number of years ago, when uh, my wife and I, we took our honeymoon to Greece, and we saw a number of old men who would have these prayer beads and they would be moving their hands along them and they would be uh, laying the worries of their day uh, to, to God himself as they were praying and thinking through things. And to, to have movement in their hands was important for them. For some people, it might be creating art as you're connecting with God and seeing his greater creation and, and, and recognizing what he has done and what he uh, is doing in your life. Whatever way that God calls you to solitude and into a relationship with Him, uh, know that, that he, he wants to connect with you. He wants to communicate. And, and He calls His disciples to be people who connect, to be people uh, who, who are in, in connection with Him and trusting Him. In our, in our gospel reading for the week uh, from Matthew chapter 6, it says this, And when you pray, Jesus said, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, that they may be seen by others. Truly I say to you that they have received their word. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees you in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words, do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. And then Jesus goes on to give His disciples the Lord's Prayer. And so often, I think, uh, we, we don't often know what to pray for. Uh, but Jesus Himself, He teaches His disciples how to pray. And, and it can be as simple as going in to the Scriptures like in Matthew here. And, and praying the Lord's Prayer, asking God uh, to provide for us, asking God to give us our daily bread, to forgive us our trespasses, and to help us uh, not be led into temptation. You see, God, God desires us to, uh, to see His Word and to respond to that. Uh, not only um, does Jesus talk about prayer, but, but Paul speaks about it in Romans as well, where Paul says sometimes we don't even have the words to express what we want to say, but the Holy Spirit, the gift of God that Jesus has breathed out, given to us, it actually allows us to, to be in communion with God to the point of just uttering, not even words, just uttering uh, before God. And God understands us intimately. He knows us and he finds us in a posture, in a place when we're at that moment where Paul's talking about just merely uttering. He finds us at a place uh, where, where we are depending upon Him and not upon ourselves in the midst of our world, in the midst of our families, in the midst of our struggles, our burdens, and our troubles. You might, you might be wondering, well, what are some practical ways then uh, that, that, I can, that I can be more connected in prayer uh, with God? How, how does that look in my life? Uh, what does that mean? Uh, it might be individual. It might be something where you say, well, each morning and evening... I'm going to take time uh, just to, to, to get away for five, ten minutes and, and just pray and, and lay out my day before God at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day, close out my day, looking back and thanking God for all that He has given to me. It might be praying with other people, inviting people in community to come together and say, hey, as, as a people, let's, um, let's lay our burdens, let's, let's lay our desires before God and let's uh, lift them to Him. It might be something uh, as simple as uh, what the, the church bells on a building, on a church, used to be used for. That whenever you hear those church bells ring, that you would stop and be reminded that this is a call to prayer. This is a time where we turn uh, to God and we say, God, uh, we trust you for all that we have. Not just one part of the day, but throughout our day. And the church bells traditionally were meant to do that, to call us to remember that God is with us and that He hears us and He's moving with us. And so this is just opening the discussion of prayer with you and your group now. Uh, there's, there's many parts of prayer that I have not touched upon. 
Um, there are many of you who have had a deep and rich prayer life longer than my 34 years of life. And so I'm excited to, to hear uh, maybe some of the discussion that you all get into as you begin to, to discuss what prayer has been, what it is, and what it will be in your lives to come, knowing that God has given you the gift of a relationship with Him through His Son, Jesus our Lord. I hope you have a great week. God bless.